Hi everybody and welcome to Educating Adventures. Today I'm so excited because we are going to be talking about a really incredible ecosystem that is filled with so many different types of plants and animals that are really unique. So let's go ahead and get started learning all about the rainforest ecosystem. Whenever we talk about ecosystems, and there are so many different types of ecosystems, we are talking about a place where there are living and non-living things and how those things interact with one another. So when we talk about the rainforest, there's a couple things that come to mind right away. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a minute here. This is a good chance for you to stop the video and discuss as a class what are some of the things that you guys think of when you picture a rainforest ecosystem? All right, are you ready? So when I think of a rainforest, a lot of times in science, scientists use big fancy words that are kind of confusing, but this is not one of those instances. When I think about the rainforest, I think about rain. It's very rainy in a rainforest. And I think about trees because trees are the main plant that we find in a forest ecosystem. So when we talk about a rainforest, we can be talking about a temperate rainforest that's a little bit further away from the equator. But most of the time when we think about a rainforest, we are picturing a tropical rainforest that is right along the equator. And so the temperature there is the same year round and that makes it really a great spot for lots of different plants and animals to live. And the rainforest, it's a really small ecosystem. When we look at the entire world, the rainforest ecosystem makes up just a small portion of the entire world. But there are so many different plants and animals that live there. Some scientists think that 50% of all the organisms in the world can be found in the rainforest. And like we said before, that's because there's lots of good resources for them. It's a great temperature, there's lots of trees, which means there's food and hiding places. So when we picture a rainforest, a lot of times we like to picture it in four layers. The bottom layer is gonna be our forest floor. This is where when any leaves fall off of the trees or there's any material that falls down to the ground, it ends up on the forest floor, it's the ground. When we go one step up from the forest floor, that is when we are talking about the understory. And the understory doesn't get a lot of light, and we're gonna talk about that again in just a minute here, but that makes it kind of challenging for new plants to grow. There's a lot of different organisms down there, so they're all competing for space, but this is where we would find young plants and vines. And then if we go one step up from the understory, now we're in the canopy. And the canopy is where all the treetops are. And in a rainforest, because the trees are so close together, we call it a closed canopy because all of the trees are so close. When the light shines down, all of those leaves block a lot of light. And that's why it's so dark down in the understory. And the top layer of a rainforest ecosystem, that is what we call the emergent layer. And this is just when you look at a picture of a rainforest from far back and you see one tree sticking out here and there, that is our emergent layer. Those are the trees that emerge just above the canopy that are able to grow a little taller and get more access to light. Because all the trees are so close together, like we just mentioned, and all of these different layers are really dense, we actually say that the rainforest has not only its own water cycle, but its own nutrient cycle. So let's think a little bit about this for a second. When we picture trees, they need water to grow, right? And when the rain falls down from the clouds and they get a lot of rain in the rainforest, the roots are able to absorb some of that water and the water travels up the trees into their leaves. And then once the water is in the leaves, it transpires. And that means that the plant basically sweats and some of that water evaporates out of the leaves and goes as water vapor up into the clouds. 
when there's enough water vapor up in the clouds and it gets really heavy, and this happens pretty quickly because there are so many trees transpiring, it comes back down to the ground as rain and the whole process starts over again. And that's kind of similar to the nutrient cycle. So again, if we picture these trees, we're up in the leaves and it's a windy day, there are leaves getting blown around and some of those leaves fall down to the forest floor. And now down on the forest floor, there are lots of decomposers, lots of little animals and bacteria that eat up all of that dead stuff and add nutrients back into the soil. And just like the tree's roots absorb water into the tree, they also absorb nutrients. And those nutrients travel up into the roots and up into the tree, and they are able to grow more leaves because of the nutrients, and the whole process starts over again. So the rainforest is really good at creating its own type of environment, and that is kind of one of the reasons that the rainforest is really unique. Even though the rainforest is very unique, like we just mentioned, it shares some things in common with other ecosystems. And one of those things that they share is that there are both living and non-living things. So when we talk about living things, we call those biotic. And when we talk about the non-living things, we call those abiotic. So let's think first about some of the abiotic factors of a rainforest. We've actually already mentioned a few of them. Rain is a great example of a non-living thing that we find in the rainforest. Nutrients that the plants all suck up to continue to grow, that is non-living. It's very humid in the rainforest. All of that moisture that's in the air, that either helps or hurts depending on what type of organism we're talking about. It's also very warm. Temperature is a non-living thing that we find in every ecosystem. So we said because rainforests are right along the equator, it stays warm for most of the year. And like we said, that benefits, that's helpful for a lot of different organisms. So now let's think about some of the biotic factors, some of those living things. And we're gonna start with plants. So we said that the nutrients that fall down to the ground as leaves and then they get decomposed and all of those nutrients are added to the soil, there are so many different types of plants in the rainforest ecosystem that they are all competing for some of those nutrients. So if we think about all the big trees that live there, there are trees that we call kapoke trees that are giant. We usually find those guys in the emergent layer. One way that they are able to not only conserve nutrients, but also water is they drop their leaves during the winter. And that is not something we usually see in the rainforest. The rainforest is usually green all year long. So that kapoke tree has developed a really special way to kind of conserve some of those nutrients. We might also think of vines that grow between all of the big trees. That way they're able to kind of move about and get to those areas where there's really good sunlight. That again is something that all the plants in the rainforest are competing for. One of my favorite plants is called a bromeliad. And bromeliads are amazing because instead of growing in the soil like other plants do, a lot of them actually grow on tree trunks. They grow up off the ground on trees. So instead of getting nutrients from the soil, they are actually able to pull nutrients from the air, from the atmosphere, which is a really big benefit because there are only so many nutrients to go around in the soil. Another really cool plant that we find in the rainforest is called a pitcher plant. And pitcher plants are even a little bit weirder than a bromeliad because they are what we call a carnivorous plant. And carnivore means meat eater. And normally when we think of a carnivore, we think of lions and tigers, we think of animals. But pitcher plants, actually, they are shaped like a little pitcher. And inside that pitcher, they create a really sweet smelling sugar that attracts lots of little bugs. And when those little bugs come over to drink some of that sweet sugar water, sometimes they slip right into the pitcher and down at the base of the pitcher, that plant is able to kind of dissolve that animal and pull nutrients from that animal and in a way, kind of eats it. 
So pitcher plants are really amazing because just like the bromeliad, who doesn't pull nutrients out of the soil, they can pull nutrients out of eating little animals, which is really, really weird for a plant. So we just spent a little bit of time talking about plants, which are a biotic factor. But now let's talk about some animals that we might find in the rainforest. And the first animal that comes to mind for me is an orangutan, which is perfectly designed for life in the rainforest. Orangutans are what we call arboreal, which means instead of living on the ground like us, they actually spend most of their time up in the trees. And because they live up in the trees, they have had to develop some really cool adaptations to help them live up there. And one of those adaptations are their fingers. They have really special hands and feet that help them climb around in the forest. So if you look at an orangutan's hands, their fingers are super, super long. This helps them to grab onto things. And they're really strong. Sometimes orangutans can be really big, so they have to be strong to hold up their body weight. If you look at their feet, you might notice that they actually look like another set of hands. So orangutans almost have four hands, which is really weird, but really helpful for climbing. That helps them to be able to grab onto all sorts of different branches. Orangutans are also what we call a frugivore, which means that they mostly eat fruit. And there is a lot of fruit in the rainforest because of all of these big trees. So orangutans will climb up high using all of those cool adaptations to grab fruit. And orangutans, when they're babies, spend a lot of time with their moms learning where the good fruit is, what time of year to go looking for it. So orangutans are very intelligent, which is a, another really helpful adaptation for an animal that lives in the rainforest. So we said orangutans are pretty big, but now let's think of something that's a little bit smaller. Let's think of a poison dart frog. A poison dart frog is known for being very colorful, and there are lots of different types of them. They can be blue or yellow or red. They can come in all sorts of different colors. And you might be wondering, why would an animal want to be brightly colored in a rainforest where there are a lot of predators and things that might want to eat a poison dart frog? And their bright color actually serves as a warning to predators that kind of says, hey, I'm poisonous, I'm dangerous, you might want to go find your lunch somewhere else. So this bright color is kind of a way to make predators rethink what they might be trying to eat and maybe go look for a different type of frog to turn into lunch. And just like we said, orangutans are arboreal, so are poison dart frogs. They spend a lot of time using their sticky feet to climb up trees, hang out on leaves. They'll even hang out in some of those bromeliads that we mentioned before up on the tree branches. Another arboreal animal that lives in the rainforest, I'm sure you guys are familiar with, is a sloth. And when we picture a sloth, we definitely don't picture them walking around on the ground. We picture them hanging up in the trees, right? And they blend in really well. Sloths have great camouflage that helps them kind of stay hidden from any hawks or eagles that might try to make a yummy snack out of a sloth. So they hang up in the trees and it does not take them a lot of energy to hang out up there because of some of their cool adaptations. They have super long claws or fingernails that are kind of like hooks. So when they are hanging out up in the trees, they don't have to grab their fingers around any branches. Those claws just kind of help them hang there. And it's important that it doesn't take a lot of energy for them to hang there because sloths eat food that has not a lot of nutrients in it. And that's part of the reason that they're so slow. All of those leaves that they are consuming, they do not have a lot of energy in it for those sloths. And sloths also digest their food really, really slowly. A sloth actually only goes to the bathroom once every five to seven days, so about once a week. And when they do that, they climb all the way down to the forest floor and go to the bathroom, and then they climb all the way back up. And when they are down on the, ocean, or on the forest floor, that's pretty dangerous. There are lots of predators down there that might want to eat a sloth. So if they had to do that every day, it would put them at way more risk. 
So having a slow digestion is again, a really helpful adaptation for a sloth in the rainforest. So now we have learned a lot about the rainforest ecosystem. We learned about their layers and the water and nutrient cycles and all of the different biotic factors that we would find in a rainforest. So I hope you guys think that the rainforest is just as cool as I do now, and I hope we see you guys again at our next educating adventure.